the British invasion of 1897 was meant to crush us. The incense of the British. The British was not only interested in defeating the Edo people. They, they had no interest. That was not what they were interested only. They were interested in exterminating us from the very surface of the earth. From the very surface of the earth. The soil. Thanks for clicking on this channel. Please subscribe to Afo's blog history and click on the notification button so that whenever we upload a new video you will be notified. Aftermath of Invasion 1897 Benins are the most victimized people as an ethnic group in Nigeria. According to Mr. Izadawa, what happened to the Benins during and after the British invasion of 1897 had happened to another ethnic group, they would have disappeared from history. Here we are, we are still surviving. During the British invasion in 1897, the Ezimo of that era said this war didn't concern him. A Benin man abandoned his people. Don't forget, Ezimo is supposed to be the second in command in our war generalissimo after E.R. Sell. Izomo is supposed to be the chief protector of our history. Instead, he said I had no crime against the British and I was not the one who caused the war. The Izomo of that time deliberately abandoned his king. Eventually, Benin lost that war, his house was among the houses burned, and he later regretted his action, that he would have joined the war if he had known. The British invasion of 1897 was meant to crush us, Izadawa added. He also said that the British were not interested in defeating us but they were interested in exterminating us as a people from the very surface of the earth. They saw a unique race, the most distinctive of all the races they had met in Africa. They had one mandate, exterminate them from the surface of the earth. Every single territory we had was given to our neighbors. The Benins who deserted our land were not allowed to come back. Close to 50 years, until they became almost forcefully acculturated to our neighbors. The British plan was to destroy us, completely. Please sit down and watch as Mr. Izadawa tells us the untold story of the British invasion of 1897 quite some few things that might inspire all of us so that is why to this topic it's about the relics of the past the relics of the past um, the pains of the future of the present the invasion of 1897 the relics of the past the invasion of 1897 and the pains and the problems, the difficulties of the present, of the future. Uh, as an ethnic group, we are one of the most victimized people in the entire world. What happened during the British invasion in 1897? Um, what happened during the British invasion in 1897 was not, uh, if it had happened to other ethnic nationalities, If it had happened to every other ethnic nationalities, um, there would have been lost in history. But we are still here trying to find our feet, trying to put things right as best as a people. trying to get a better future for the, our generations yet are born. It is important that we must, uh, we must get 
um, a lot of these things correctly. So as to chart a more purposeful future. Uh, I know a whole lot of you ask why have I allowed um, uh, Monkey Face to be here in this program. Uh, I allowed him because I know I'm convinced strongly that through my program he will get the salvation through my program he will get to know the truth that whatever fight he think he's fighting is self-centered selfish and is going to drown him so but I have always realized that there shouldn't be discrimination between ourselves even when some have a variant opinion During the British invasion in 1897, during the British invasion in 1897, the Isomer of that era said, Okona Makame, a Benin man who abandoned his people. Don't forget, don't forget, it's almost supposed to be, is the second in command in our war generalismo after the Yase. It's almost the next in command. He was supposed to be the chief protector of our history. But instead, he said he had no crime against the British. And as such, these are some of the stories that have not been told. The Ezomo of the British invasion in 1897 deliberately abandoned his king to his fate. He had a lackadaisical attitude towards his people. Eventually, the Benins lost that war. What, what, what became him? He regretted that the buying he got the by Dogbinoko because some of the houses that were eventually burnt down was his own house. Was his own house. So in times of war, there are no neutrality. Either you are in or you are out. Either you are there or you are not there. Either you are for or you are against. Shocking. The Yase of that era. Also, I can remember that one's name. His name was Okina also rebelled against the Benin people. The rebel, the, you don't, why I said you people shouldn't insult him? 
there's a level that you attain in understanding beneath history. There's a level that the ancestors of this land, of Edo land, might have taken you deep into the miseries of the land. You will not be moved by recalcitrant Edo people because the fire that the light will eventually burn them. This story is almost the same story of this monkey face. But in this case, his name was Iyase Okina, who rebelled against Benin Kingdom in the year 1899. His whole idea was that there was no need to be a king in Benin Kingdom. And Iyase, who was supposed to know better, his name is Iyase Okina. He protested against the coming back of the Benin monarch. He protested against, against it fervently in 1899 but a year later in 1900 he died 14 years later the Benin monarch was restored why am I sharing this story why am I sharing this story with all of you I'm sharing this story with all of you is that every man or woman that has stood against the Edo people, the monarch and the monarchy, the king and the people, they have all died. The people is still living, still exist, and the king still exists. So, at every generation, they are bound to be rebel. They are bound. And that is why I, <laughs> I, I, I don't feel what he is doing. There must be a rebel. <laughs> there is no doubt about it. You understand they will all die but the monarch will subsist that's the beauty they are bound to be rebels to the throne they have always been rebels to every thrones of the world they will all die the history will remember them just like the history is remembering Iyase Okina we are discussing about him how he rebelled about there should not be any need for the Benin throne to return. He died a year after, and 14 years later, the throne returned. The history no longer rem remembers Iyasa Okina. Iyasa Okina is being remembered as a traitor to his people and to the throne. So, how we play our parts, it's how history we remember the part and the roles that we have played. I choose to be in the right side of history. I choose to be an Edo man who stands for his people. Selflessly. I choose to be an Edo man who will put his life on the track for his people selflessly how we are remembered by history is based on what side of history we wear during our era of lives so count him as that person 
who chose the wrong side of history at the time of his life and history will remember him as that which stood against his people at the time where unity was needed all right so having said that the british invasion of 1897 was meant to crush us the entrance of the british the british was not only interested in defeating the Edo people they, they had no interest that was not what they were interested only they were interested in exterminating us from the very surface of the earth from the very surface of the earth they saw a very unique race the most unique of all the races they have met in the African continent they had one mandate exterminate them from the surface of the earth everything that has to do as regards a benign man every single territories that we had was taken away from us and given to our neighbors and those who dissected our land we are not allowed to return back for close to 50 years until they became almost forcefully acculturated to our neighbors the british plan was to completely destroy us the british plan is to still destroy us mm. but we're still here however what they did has a devastating capacity on our people am i quite there the ones around to the present day southwest were never allowed in short there was a protest between 1905 to 1907 of the Edo indigenous around to the Yoruba present day Yoruba land that they wanted to return home but the British said on no account should anybody who has left the city Benin city to return back so they were serious in ensuring that an ethnic group a race called the Edo race a kingdom or an empire called the Benin should never be seen but shockingly our ancestors prevailed we are still here but we need to get it right we need to get it right otherwise we are no longer our destiny no longer lies in the hands of the British our destiny so that lies on our hands and how we go about it will determine the future that we might create for our generations of born the relics of the past has really really affected us in all ways psychologically emotionally in all ways that you can think of in all ways that you can think of 
but what can we do to salvage the situations? That is what is most important. That is what is most important. I'd like to talk about the failure of our elites. I'd like to talk about it briefly. And I'd like, by the power of God and our ancestors willing, I'd like to make it a topic on how shameful our so-called elites are. The times of kings are not gone. <clears throat> That's what you don't understand. Osakwe. When God created us, He created us with a structured leadership. The leadership of the kings. By nature, we are Republican people. Have you seen when Benin people conspire against the king? Have you seen, have you, have you, have you read some of these conspiracies against the king? They all, the, any conspiracy against the king, in the history of Benin, when the Umanag Banedo ya conspire against the Oba, they all succeeded. Now, the only one they did not succeed was Obaesige. The reason they did not succeed was not, it was not the Edo people that fought the king. It was a section of the Edo people, Abihaim, that fought the king. That's why they did not succeed. If it was the entire Edo people, they would certainly have succeeded. But the consequences of some of these actions took us hundreds of years back because In all of this conspiracy against the monarch, we will eventually later realize the accents of the bond between the people and the king. And I haven't have times I've stressed this bond. This bond has to be balanced. It has to be a scale of 50-50. Oba or Edo, Edo or Oba. It's a scale of 50 50. All right? If the people overshadows the Oba, they are bound to be anarchy. If the Oba overshadows the people, they are bound to be anarchy. The traditional institution of the Edo people must understand that it's a balance. You give to the people, the people give to you. The power that the monarch possesses is drawn from his people. The relevance of the kingship is from the people. Amiedune Akemioba. Oba Usuema Nik no sa di no tedo no tedo ya no se. We must understand this balance. In one of our topics, I'm going to speak on this balance. I'm going to speak on this balance. All right. But let me not deviate. My brief, my grief today is against our elites or our so-called elites we have had series of struggles we have had the Benini just struggle in recent times the struggle that I am aware of the struggle that I am aware of the Benin it just struggle at Gilegele environs We had the Benin Shekiri struggle at Tolobo. And even in recent times, the kingship of the Olu of Wari. I'm yet to see any of the elites 
When I mean elites, I'm talking about the Enigis. I'm talking about your hands. I'm talking about your Kaigilis. I'm talking about your Kaios. Those that are traditionally empowered to be a servo to the Edo people. What roles have they played in recent times? To assist the Edo nationality. To fight for the survivor of the Edo people. The old Benin society was built on a foundation of selflessness. A may not kind do or kind yet do. A kinana yu ya no ye do ne ogi kai e bedo. Adesua was a daughter of Ezomo. And it, she, she was murdered by the Obuluku king. I don't know I do I want king. Oswima Ogbe. And a war was declared upon. I can give you examples of killing a Benin person, how it has led to Benin waging war against ethnic groups or neighboring towns who killed one of them. The strength of unity. Akubewaro. There were selflessness. There were people who, who were selfless to the very cost of Benin land. Extremely selfless. But today, what do we have? A bunch of useless, stupid, ragged, self centered leaders I see them a lot and I feel so ashamed of their ignorance of their dishonesty of their stupidity even as elders who in times of turbulence and troubles they were supposed to be the bastion some we need to lean on. But you see those guys? They are fucking self-centered. Outside the Benin traditional, outside the Benin monarch, I don't think we have any other leadership. Is there any Edo man that you think every Edo man must run to? Outside the Obaro Guinea. You know? Error. Because they are all bloody self-centered egos. Ecocentrical bunch of uh, they, they, they can only be interested if we are mere way. It's not very difficult for you to see a Benin man who does not have interest, if whose interest is not protected, will be able to put it everything every single thing out to fight for the nationality of his people it's very difficult and that's why we are and that's why we are not great anymore i tell people that when Benin start getting some of the essentialities of the old society right when they start getting it right that's the only way that a lot of these little little things no we ma or the baby we ma until 
we start to critically look inward to examine the problems of ourselves as a people uh, we're going to be see after the British did all they had to do I don't know how they did it suddenly we became people who no longer recognizes themselves anymore they no they no longer recognizes the sacrifices of the old how the ancestors of the old built a civilizations that was incomparable and i give i give hundreds of reasons i tell them that the, the difference between the beginnings of old and the beginnings of present is miles apart they are not the same in all categories they are not the same. Edo, Nede, Vedo, Vedenena. They are not the same. They are, they are, they are miles apart. They are hundreds, millions of miles apart. Millions of miles apart. We no longer have morals and morals is almost zero you know they had pride the pride that they had was not the useless pride that we now have a pride that's a useless pride now but knowing fully well that the old Benin society was built on hard work and excellence I've told in one of, I've talked about I've talked about this in several occasions that hard work Evario Bow see we tried to hide hmm? we tried to hide under the guise of religion it is not religion I don't See, the, our problem is beyond religion. Don't forget, during the times of Obaisigi, there was religion, but the Benins had a unity of purpose. They were not this, they were not divided. That is why I tell people, that is why a lot of people have mistook what I stand for, for their own modernity. Modernity of current trends I will not discriminate against an Edo man because he's a Christian because they were Christians in Benin somewhat 500 years ago but the leadership was able to harness them to have a unity of purpose the, the Benin society is so old that we can have all set of religion in Benin kingdom and still we'll be able to strive because to us it was nationality first before even when we were practicing our core tradition of the old there were different schools of tradition there were people who were Olokun servers there were people who practiced the divinity of Osagbaye. They were Iha practicers. These are different schools of divinity. But there were no clashes. Or Segenaya Fia Agi Fia. Or Segenaya Bobolokun Agi Bobolokun. These are different schools of religiosity or different schools of tradition that beckons 
basically on different ideas. The worshipping of Olokun